Welcome to day two of the 24 seven challenge. Every start has a day two. It's the day that we have to make a decision, not just with our emotions, but with our will to continue on to do what we said that we were going to do. And today we're going to talk about rhythms. You see, God is a God of rhythms. As we look at all of creation around us, there's rhythms, there's seasons, there are days, there's biological rhythms, there's ecological rhythms. And we see these same kind of rhythms continue to come up. And the question is, how do we have these consistent rhythms in our own spiritual journey? And that's what we want to talk about today. You see, there are a couple of different ways that we can view time. As we look at North America and the way that we view time here in the West, what you'll notice is that time is something that doesn't ever seem to have rhythms. Like as I look at the clock on my wall in my office, I look and I know many of us might not have an analog clock laying around, but if you think about an analog clock, you'll notice that it's always going. It never stops. I, I look up and that second hand continues to tick. The minute hand continues to spin. And you'll notice that there's never really an end to it. It just continues. And that kind of idea and view of time is a very linear view of time. That we start at one point in time and we go on this timeline to another point in time. And we never really have a rhythm or a routine. It's just like an ongoing idea of time. But there's another way to view time. And that other way to view time is more of a cyclical, more of a rhythm kind of view of time. And so I was thinking about that. I thought about an hourglass. And so next to me, I have this hourglass. And as we look at the way that it works, there's sand that moves from one side to the other. And when the sand runs out, in order to continue to be able to measure time, you spin it around. And I think many of us would benefit from viewing time this way. As we even think about seasons of work and seasons of rest, as we think about seasons of harvest and seasons of planting, that every single thing in life has a rhythm. It has a season that it's in. And it's the same thing with the difference between our spiritual life of being something that's linear and we're just kind of viewing it as going uh, from one point in time to another and viewing our spiritual life as something that has rhythms. And so today, let's talk about how to incorporate rhythms of spiritual consistency in our lives. Richard Foster, I think, gives us an, an incredible understanding of why there is a motivation, a desire inside of us. You see, if motivation is the fire, then rhythms is the fuel that keeps that fire burning. And here's what Richard Foster says that I think every single one of us can relate to in that we all have a desire to incorporate spiritual rhythms into our lives. Richard Foster says this, he says, perhaps somewhere in the subterranean chambers of your life, you have heard the calling to deeper, fuller living. You have become weary of frothy experiences and shallow teaching. Every now and then you've caught glimpses, hints of something more you have known. Inwardly, you long to launch out into the deep. As we talk about these spiritual rhythms, it is our launching out into the deep of saying yes to taking ownership over our own spiritual transformation and journey. And as we talk about this idea of rhythms, what we're talking about are spiritual practices. Some people would refer to them as spiritual disciplines or devotions. John Wesley, who um, actually started the Wesleyan movement, was somebody who called these means of grace. They were places where throughout scripture, we see God show up and respond to his people. We see God's transforming practices and presence in these different places, these means of grace. But there are some different rhythms that I think are important to us understanding how to incorporate this consistently into our life. So today, let's talk about another word for rhythms would be habits. Habits have three different elements. The first one is a reminder. The second one is a routine, and the third is a reward. And so let's go ahead and break down what a rhythm or a habit would look like. Let's start with a reminder. So I'm gonna encourage you, there are a couple of different ways that you can set up reminders in your life to have consistency. The first one I'm gonna to refer to is called habit stacking. 
Habit stacking is one of my favorite reminders. What that means is you're gonna find a habit that you currently have. So maybe for some of, us, some of us, it's gonna be brushing our teeth or making our coffee in the morning or getting the kids ready for school. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack another habit on top of the habit we already have. So here's a great example. Let's say that every day you have the habit of waking up and reaching for your cell phone. So if you wanna stack a habit, then what you're gonna do is you're going to put your Bible on top of your cell phone. So that way, when you reach for your cell phone every morning, instead of getting to your cell phone, you reach for the Bible and it reminds you to set up that time to spend time with God during this 24 seven challenge consistently. So you notice how there's a habit and then there's something that you stack on top of it. For me, I love making coffee. I make coffee every single day. And so there was a season where in order to remember what I wanted to do, I would stack something on top of where I would make my coffee. And that would remind me that every single day, I'm going to add that routine into my life. It's habit stacking. So for some of us, as we talk about consistency in the next 24 seven challenge, in the next 30 days, we are going to utilize habit stacking to remind us of our routine. For others of us, we love consistency. And so for others, we're gonna have consistency and timing. This one is honestly the best for me when it comes to my own spiritual practices that I wanna make sure every morning I wake up and one of the first things that I do is I spend time with God. That I know that before I spend time looking on social media, before I spend time getting to work, before I spend time doing anything else, I wanna spend time with God consistently. And so maybe that means that you're gonna wake up 24 minutes earlier than you normally do throughout the next 30 days. That's totally okay. Or maybe you know that you're somebody who's a night owl and when you come home from, from work and once your kids are all in bed and you had some time together with your spouse that you're gonna take 24 minutes minutes and you're going to spend that time at night connecting with God, but you're going to be about the habit of consistency. So those are the two ways that I think are the most important as we look at incorporating rhythms into our life of reminder as habit stacking and consistent timing. So once we have the reminder, then we step into the routine. And I have a couple of thoughts when it comes to our routines. The first one is this, commit to at least four minutes. That's the most easy thing that as I think about it, sometimes we think I don't have 24 minutes today. I'm gonna say, listen, no matter what, spend four minutes. We can spend four minutes doing anything. Four minutes, it takes two minutes to brush our teeth. So if you take two minutes while you're brushing your teeth and two minutes after you brush your teeth to read the Bible or to pray or to spend time with God, you spent four minutes. And oftentimes what I find is once I actually get into the first four minutes, I realized this is actually something I wanted to do the whole time. And so I'm gonna encourage you, the first thing to do when it comes to building into a routine is spend four minutes. The second thing I'm gonna tell you to do is to keep all of your things in its place. So what this means is sometimes I think we decide to start a new habit, but we don't actually keep our things in our place. So when we actually wanna start it, we don't know where anything is. So then we're kind of scurrying around, wondering what we're gonna do that day, wondering where to find our Bible or where to encounter our journal or where to find these videos and uh, where we're gonna do it. And so I would encourage you have one place, have a chair that you go to that you know is your chair to spend your time with God have a room that you go to. For me, I gotta be honest, maybe you're a parent and you're struggling to find a place. There was a season in my life where I would literally go in my closet, I would sit on the floor and that was my space. So as we talk about consistency and understanding what our rhythm is, I think the greatest challenges and encouragements I can give to you are to make sure that you spend at least four minutes, that you say every single day I'm gonna spend four minutes and find a place that you're gonna be in consistently. The last thing that we find is once we have a reminder and a routine, the last part of a habit or a rhythm is the reward. So as we look at a reward, maybe there are a couple of different ways that you can look at this. On your handout, there are two different rewards that you're gonna see. The first one is that it's gonna be treat yourself. Like maybe it's a treat yourself kind of reward. That for me, as I think about a reward in the morning uh, for, for spending my time with God, it would be the only time that I can drink my coffee in the morning is when I'm spending time with God. That throughout the rest of the day, I can't drink coffee if I haven't spent that time with God yet today. And for me, that's gonna be a huge motivator. It's gonna be a huge reward for me spending that time with God. Uh, but those are some things that I think would be great for treat yourself kind of reward. The second kind of reward would be a self-restraint reward. So you would make a commitment to say, I'm not gonna go on social media until 
I spend that time with God today. You're going to say, I'm not going to watch TV until I spend that time with God today. I'm not going to, and you can fill in the blank of whatever it is. But when you spend your time with God, that's when you're going to allow yourself to be able to do whatever he said you're going to do. And so there's the treat yourself kind of rewards, and then there's a the self-restraint kind of rewards, both of which encourage us, motivate us toward having those healthy rhythms in our spiritual journey. There are a couple of final things that I want to talk about. The first one is this. The first one is we have given you a habit tracker. Now, a habit or a rhythm tracker is a great way to be able to commit to yourself, I'm not going to break the chain. That every single day for 30 days, I'm going to spend at least four minutes. And so in your handbook, there's actually a tracker. The second thing I'm going to encourage you to do with that tracker is to go ahead and write down one word for every single day. I think this helps us along the journey to be able to see where we've been and where we're going. And so today we talk about rhythms. That as I look at the hourglass next to me, it reminds me that we need to live life in rhythms. There have to be seasons of pause and seasons of work. There need to be seasons of connection with God and seasons of going about our daily life. And so this is gonna be our opportunity as we think about routine, reward, and reminders to be able to have that regular rhythm of life with God.